Lately, there is a lot of buzz about skeuomorphism, and um, a lot of designers they have started started using the same uh, skeuomorphic effects which were present like five or six years ago. Uh, skeuomorphism is actually related to how objects look in real life. So, if the button looks pressed, they have shadows, they have embossy effects, and things kind uh, things like that. So. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to design one of these two. I am going to design the left one, which is white one. And I am going to show you how actually this whole works. So there are a lot of tutorials online that they just teach you the values. Pick up this color, draw this rectangle, uh, give this drop shadow and things like that. That, But they, what they don't teach is how actually this whole skeuomorphism works. So I'm going to uh, give you a very basic lesson of uh, about how these shadows works and how this whole effect is created in Adobe XD. I have also created the same effect in uh, Figma. So if you understand this, there is no limit you can do this in any design tool. So let's get started and I'm going to create another uh, artboard over here. So let's create a new one. So I'm going to create a new one, which is iPhone XXS. And uh, okay, so we are going to begin with the color. So we need a color which is kind of grayish blue. So what I do is I normally go to HSB. So I'm going to pick up a blue, blue hue color. Uh, saturation is going to be 3% and 94% is going to be brightness. So we need a very light uh, color, which is going to be something like this. Then we are going to pick up a rectangle. So you can pick up any shape if you want a round shape or whatever, it's up to you. So what I did is I have more width and less height, something like this. So it's basically a rectangle, not a square. And then we are going to remove the border. Uh, let's give some border radius 32 pixels because rounded shapes they are going to look great uh, in skeuomorphism they are going to look great when the shadows you know uh, get come out from them so this is going to work like that so here we have our basic shape now uh, in adobe xd right now we don't have anything other than one single shadow so we are going to use two uh, basically layers over here uh, two rectangles on top of each other but in Figma you can see I have achieved it just with one rectangle so we have just one rectangle and we have some effects draw two drop shadows one inner shadow and one stroke so these are actually the three things okay so let me go through what we want to achieve once one we have a shadow over here which is going to be this shadow so light source is over here on this side light is coming from here and every as every object in real life they are going to cast some shadows so uh, here we have the shadow in this area and on this side we have white section where we have a lot of light so it is just like um, when a button is pressed or if you look at your um, buttons in your house they have more light over here in this area and they have shadows over here so similarly we are going to have some light you can see the white section over here if I zoom in you can see we have a lot of white shadow over here which is again a drop shadow then we have something over here so this is you can see uh, a little bit of shadow inside in inner shadow uh, on this shape and we don't need anything else one more thing is this border which is a light you can see if you look closely over here in this section a very light uh, white border I have given it which is a bit uh, opaque it has low opacity and it is blending well so just to separate the shape from the background so that is why we need this uh, this uh, stroke so we have one inner shadow one shadow light shadow white shadow over here one dark shadow over here and one stroke just to separate the layer so this is the whole composition so let's get started and we are going to do that in Adobe uh, XD right now so we need two shapes over here so we have this one first we are going to give it um, shadow on the right over here so we are going to give this shadow okay 
and x value is going to be 3 we are going to shift it on the right y is also going to be 3 and for this I am going to use it something like this okay then we are going to let's use 4 over here 4 4 and 8 so something like this so we we, we don't want a dark or black shadow over here on this area we need more shadow on this area maybe we can okay so we will adjust it later on okay so this is one thing now the second thing is we need a white shadow over here so right now in adobe xd we can have just one shadow which i have really requested this feature again and again from adobe that please add one more at least one more shadow because html css everything is um, you know uh, giving two shadows even three or four multiple shadows you can even do it in html so let's replicate this so we are going to replicate this file this shape sorry and uh, in in uh, now we have this front top sh top rectangle and we have this bottom rectangle oops bottom rectangle so now what we are going to do is with our top rectangle we are going to remove uh, move this shadow so we need now white shadow over here so we are going to use white shadow for the top layer and we are going to use almost 80% uh, opacity for this white shadow and we are going to move it in this direction so to move this in this direction we are going to use minus 4 and minus 4 over here okay now you are going to get the idea what I am going through okay so one shadow over here values are the same so you can see here I have 4 4 8 and on the top one I have minus 4 minus 4 and 8 so this is actually the trick over here so try to use a double value over here for the blur because it is going to give the shadow uh, a little bit of you you can say blurry effect okay so we have this prepared now we are going to do is very simple we are going to pick up the color from this background simple as that similarly for the bottom we are going to pick the same color just like that so you can see we have the basic effect already approaching very near to us and uh, now you can see we are almost done you can see it really looks great it is looks like something is coming out uh, pressed or maybe embossed effect some something like that now for the top layer we are going to give some more things like we are going to give it a border so border is going to be white or very close to this color so let's pick this color start from this color sorry start from this color for the border and now I'm going to use this brightness value and I'm going to move it at 99% now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this opacity and I'm going to reduce it to where I like it the most or we don't want it to be very prominent so we don't want this line to be very prominent so I'm going to give it something like this so this is uh, the basic shape now we need a shadow on this area just to have some pressed effect because when the light is going to come from here we also get some shadow on our buttons over here in this area this is the realistic approach so we are actually building a real thing so for the fill what we are going to do is we are going to go to linear gradient and we are going to use some gradient like this over here in this section okay so for this color this color at the end it is going to be the same from here and for this color we are going to use something darker so what I'm doing over here you can see these two are the same colors but I am just changing this brightness so I'm making it a bit more dark so I think this this is this looks good we don't want a very dark color over here so let's uh, let's 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 do it something like this okay so it's up to you you can change um, something I think I think this one looks great so uh, there we have it this is our basic button you can put whatever text over here you can use um, I actually I actually used 12 45 something like that I use 55 for the text uh, also if you want to use Roboto Roboto 
font also looks great over here typeface and uh, let's uh, use it something like that and also what I did is you can um, I picked up this color and I used uh, something like this and let's move the something maybe over here okay so then we can also pick up uh, replicate this text duplicate it by pressing and holding alt or option key and i'm going to reduce the size to 20 and it is going to be today is 29th and december 2019 so this is going to be at the bottom we can adjust the size by uh, going like this so we it is almost equal to this one now let's make them in the center like this i'm going to reduce it to 22 because sometimes we have to visually center things not from the mathematical values so this looks good uh, you can also shift to um, maybe light over here light okay so this looks great and now i'm going to change the color to something over here like this so this is actually uh, what i used this is the effect we are going to uh, be using maybe in 2020 this actually uh, start you know getting as again traction so these are basically trends you have to understand what you have to understand is how these shadows actually work how we can achieve this effect and um, I have taught this in my UI design course which was in Photoshop I think back three or four years ago uh, I'm going to give the link in the description below and this is how you can do it in uh, Adobe XD now let me go to this over here uh, here, uh, here I actually use two drop shadows one is over here white white drop shadow over here on this section here we have dark or black uh, drop shadow and uh, also one more trick is if I go to the bottom layer over here one more trick is that you can also pick up the color from here for the shadow so for the shadow I am using the same hue value to 206 almost 206 it is very close to 202 and this shadow is going to look more realistic on this background so we are going to have something like that again I am also going to reduce the opacity of the border because it is looking very prominent now it is almost gone so this is actually the effect you can fine tune it to whatever you like and uh, this is all about skeuomorphism or designing for skeuomorphic things like which are really inspired by uh, real day objects and how actually lights and shadows work. I hope you have enjoyed this video and this tutorial and it, it will help you build uh, your UI design skills. I am going to build another course which is going to be uh, my video class about uh, UI design master class which where I am going to uh, you know uh, focus no not uh, only on uh, I'm going to focus only on uh, the UI design skills and techniques rather than tools. So if you know how you can do it, you can do it in any tool. Like you can see, I am not very, uh, you can say, <coughs> very expert in uh, Figma because I rarely use it. But you can see I achieved the same effect in this one. And I believe I can do it in uh, Sketch 2. So there is no... Uh, you can say difference you can uh, if you learn something and you can apply it in uh, in any design tool so i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have learned something from this video try to like subscribe and share i know that most of my youtube viewers and watchers they are not subscribers so if you can subscribe you are going to get a lot of um, you can say notifications for my videos don't uh, forget to press the bell icon. I rarely post videos. I am not, you can say, I'm not going to bomb you with a lot of uh, useless videos. I only create videos that can give you some value and enhance your design skills. So till then, till the next video.
टेक केयर बाय वी विल मीट यू एंड इन द नेक्स्ट ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टेक केयर एंड बाय